Hello, um, this is the screencast recording for the Unit 2 Tissue Level of Organization. So this is another sort of a short recording because it's a basic introductory unit, so there's not going to be a lot to cover. But um, this is just a review from the first um, discussion. A cell remembers the basic unit of life. All living things are made up of one or more cells. Cells work together to make tissues. Tissues work together to um, carry out functions as organs. Organs work together to make up organ systems. And organ systems work together to make up organisms. So we're not going to study the cell in a lot of detail at all, actually, at all. At all. Um, and we're going to skip right to tissues. So this diagram, you remember, it shows the molecules that make up the cells, that make up the tissues, that make up organs, that make up the systems, that make up organisms. Okay, so by definition, a tissue, like we just said, is a group of cells working together to carry out some function for the body. And histology is the study of tissues. You probably know this, but whenever you see O-L-G-Y, that means the study of, and histo is cells. So histology is the study, or sorry, histo is tissue, and histology is the study of tissues. Um, so this diagram, I know it's not perfect, this, this um, sketch here or picture, because it's blown up and the, it's a little distorted, but it's just an introduction. So we have basically four types of tissue. The nervous tissue, muscle tissue, connective tissue, and epithelial tissue. And we're going to look at those right now in a little bit more detail. And then as we hit all the different body systems, then they'll, it'll all come back and you'll get a little bit more of each of those. So Here's another slide. It's super bright. <laughs> I need to put my sunglasses on. Sorry about that. But um, we'll start with connective tissue. That is the most common tissue in the body. It does the most um, different things, I guess you could say. So what it does is, as it sounds, I'll start with the second one, it's connective. It connects organs and tissues together and to other structures. It binds them together, separates them and protects and supports body parts. So it's just what it sounds like. It's, it, can, it connects organs and tissues to other parts of the body and to each other. So it can, it's not located all throughout the body. And again, when we look at the different systems, a lot of this will come back into play, this discussion. Um, the epithelial tissue, epi, epi means upon. I know in, in uh, session one, you learned a lot of prefixes and suffixes, suffix I, not sure. <laughs> But um, B means upon. So epithelial tissue covers body surfaces. For example, our skin, the top layer is epithelial. It lines cavities and passageways, such as your um, throat and your inside of your organs. And, and it's also what makes up glands. And glands are the little structures in our body that secrete things. So there's mammary glands, you have the pituitary gland, and other glands. When we look at the endocrine system, we'll get into more detail. But glands are made of epithelial tissue, and they secrete things. They make, produce, and secrete things like sweat, et cetera. Um, nervous tissue, oh, I can't see my cursor, um, is excitable. So it means it has an electrochemical charge that makes it release an impulse. And that allows the body, it carries messages from the brain to the muscles and from the muscles back to the brain. So it's a con kind of the uh, conductivity part of the, of the body, conducts messages. And the muscle tissue, muscle also responds to stimulus and it contracts and it's involved in movement. So we're going to look at each of those in just a little bit more detail. So epithelial tissue. So there's probably more on here than we need in this course. But again, it, it's, it lines things and it covers things. You can think of it that way, epi upon. So there's three cells, three different kinds of cells. There's the, and they're based, they're defined or described by their shape. So there's the cuboidal. So you can see these cells are kind of cube shaped. There's columnar and they, they're columns. And then there's squamous. Those are the, they're kind of squatty. See how they're kind of flat and squishy looking? So epithelial tissue is described by the type of cell and by how many layers. So simple 
would be one cell layer where stratified is layers, just like rocks are stratified. If you remember that from high school or science, um, stratified means layers. So this is stratified squamous because they're squishy squamous. Simple columnar because it's one cell deep. Simple cuboidal because they're one to one cell layer. Um, you can see it in here. They're showing it's lining the the trachea there. It's lining the stomach, the intestines, the lungs. The very um, it's all over. All these tissues are all over the body. So, so connective tissue. The this tissue, this type of tissue, is the most abundant, widespread, and varied of all tissue types in the body. It also has the widest variety of functions. So um, these are just pictures under the microscope of different types. You can see how varied they are. Some of it's striated like this. Sometimes it's um, circular. So basically what it does, like I said in a second ago or a minute ago, is it connects body parts together, you could say. It connects tissues to organs and all throughout the body, so it connects um, tissues together. I know I'm sounding like I'm repeating myself, but that's what it does. <laughs> okay, so muscle tissue. Muscle, muscle tissue is involved in movement. So there's three types. There's the cardiac, skeletal, and smooth. So cardiac muscle tissue is found, obviously, in the heart. And it's striated. You can see how it's striped. But and it's so it contracts and the and the stripes, it's how the uh, cells are lined up and they slide past one another as they contract. But it's involuntary, thank goodness. We wouldn't want to have to think about our heart beating all the time. It does it involuntarily involuntarily, so we don't have to consciously make it beat. Um, as opposed to on the skip up here. Smooth muscle is also involuntary, so we don't have to think about it. And it's it lines, um, or it's involved in a lot of our internal organs. It lines internal organs like your digestive system. So it also contracts, and that's what causes um, things to move through your digestive system. So again, you don't have to think about it like, oh, I just ate, you know, I need my food to move through my stomach and my small and my large intestine. It happens automatically. But there's a contractions going on that move that food through your system. So it's smooth because you don't see the stripes in it like you do in the cardiac. And it's involuntary, but it is contracting. Now, the skeletal is voluntary. So skeletal muscle attaches um, bone muscle to bone so that you can move your bones. I shouldn't say it attaches muscle to bone. It's muscle that is attached to bone. So it moves your bones and so your body moves. So it's voluntary. So we have control over it. And you can see it. All, it is also striated. And um, again, it's voluntary. So we have, we have conscious control over it. So nervous tissue. This is a nerve cell. I think they're so pretty when they're. Um, stain like that. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> you see the nucleus. So the nervous system is kind of like the considered the control center of the body. The nervous system is made up of tissues and cells that transmit messages from the muscles to the brain and back from the brain to the muscles. So for example, if you touch something hot, the message gets sent to your brain. Oh, I'm touching something hot. I need to move my hand. So then the brain sends a message back to the hand so that you remove your hand. And it happens in less than a second. So it's made up of the nerve tissue is found in the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. So the brain and the spinal cord are the central nervous system, and the nerves are the peripher peripheral nervous system. But together, all that tissue is nerve tissue made up of um, different kinds of cells. But we're not going to get deep into the anatomy because like I said, we don't have time and you don't need it for this class. If you go to nursing school, you're gonna learn so much more. So I think as a medical assistant, it's important. And when you have Kim in the lab, she'll hit on a lot of this stuff a lot more and she has a ton of experience in this. But 
we, in each unit of the different, um, this in this case the tissues, but and also the the um, systems, we'll look at different potential problems of aging as well as disease or injury to each of the systems and what that might look like because you guys are going to see this stuff. So this here, this young man, I think it's, yeah, it's a man, um, has inflammation. So inflammation is when your skin, um, you know, the tissue has, there's either a disease or injury or some toxin or some kind of an inflammatory agent comes in contact and then you have an, um, a reaction to that. And what happens is all the blood cells, not all the blood cells, but blood cells go to the surface and they bring white um, blood cells and the white blood cells fight infection and they're the fighters but it causes a swelling and a redness on the skin. So, and it's not a good thing, but it's a good reaction because you know your, your immune system is working well when this happens, it's trying to protect you. So this is an inflammation. This is another example of an inflammation. Um, this over here is atrophy. So atrophy is when tissue, in this case it's muscle, breaks down and it's either being absorbed into the body um, it's just, it's dying before, you know, the actual death of the person. So it's breakdown of, the atrophy is basically breakdown of tissue, in this case, muscle. And then over here, this is necrosis, and that's actually when tissue is dying. So from an injury again, or a disease, or um, toxins again, if there's some kind of exposure to a chemical or something like that, which causes the tissue to actually die. And that is, again, before the actual death of the person. So it's the person hasn't died, just or the tissue's dying in, prematurely. I was just gonna about to say, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> okay. It's really late right now. <laughs> it's almost midnight. I'm getting punchy. Okay, so here are the key terms. That was a pretty short and sweet little discussion. And if you read that unit, which I hope that you do, it's way more detailed than that. But like I said, the quizzes and tests, or we'll call them tests, will just be over the what's on the PowerPoints to make it more appropriate for what you guys need. So here are the key terms. And then reminder, and I will put this PowerPoint in Edmodo too, so you can, if you want to review it and not listen to me. Um, but just a reminder, so this weekend I'm going to work on Today is Thursday night right now, so sometimes we can all do unit three, which is the, um, who does that one? It doesn't matter. Um, but Tuesday, we'll discuss the project, and then we'll review one, two, and three. Just, hey, does anybody have any questions? Anything not make sense or whatever? And then after that, I'll release those first three quizzes that I need to really, I need to write still. And then after that, then start reading four, five, and six, and I'll start doing those screencasts, and we'll go on from there. So also, um, <clears throat> um, start thinking about the project, what you might want to do. If you want to talk to somebody, say, hey, let's three of us work together. You know, we can start thinking along those lines and, and start brainstorming some ideas on Tuesday. So that's it. Hopefully that was um, helpful to you. And I will see you, well, I'll, I'll see you Tuesday, but I'm going to work on the other one this weekend. And um, I hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.